Can you say hi to Daddy? Who's Pepper? Okay. Guess what? Teddy bears never went off. Can you say hi to Daddy? <laughs> My name is Tanya Kofer. I'm a mother. I'm a daughter. I'm a wife. I'm also a data scientist. And a really good one. In, in its sort of a most broad sense, um, data science is the intersection of three disciplines. One is statistics and mathematics as one. The other is uh, coding and computer science as another. Um, and then the third one is actually really important and that is the, um, the application area or the discipline in which you're working. So here it is lending and risk analytics, um, but it might be commerce, um, it might be logistics, it might be sports. There's a lot of cool sports analytics out there now, right? If you've noticed that um, there's a lot more um, attempted free throws in um, pro basketball or a lot of more a lot more attempted fourth downs in football that's analytics data um, can be monetized and 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 in a good way right so we all um, uh, we all want things to work uh, the best that they can right so when I get on to Amazon and I want to order something um, if I can't find what I want in less than three minutes, I get really frustrated, right? Because I've come to count on the analysts that work at Amazon um, to make sure that it's really easy for me to find what I want, they know what I want. Anybody who works in data science is taking the data that is just streaming out of everywhere, our phones, anytime we interact with the web, any you know, any, any sort of digital technology, every time, every transaction we make is just a stream of ones and zeros, right? You can almost imagine them just coming out of everything. And that can be turned into insights, business insights, um, that can be used to predict um, behavior, right? Um, whether somebody's going to purchase something or whether somebody is going to accept a loan offer, whether somebody is going to default on a loan, that kind of stuff can be um, fairly accurately uh, modeled uh, using a lot of the data that we that we collect in the world. And, and, and again, it's a, it's a two-way street. A lot of people worry about data being collected and used, but honestly, we also all benefit from it, right? The kind of woman that is attracted to this kind of career is somebody who is very logical and analytical. Um, and I think that there are a lot of women out there um, that are just that. Women are getting um, degrees in technology and math and science at higher rates you know, every year. They're self-selecting into programs like data science, like engineering, uh, like mathematics, and there are more of them out there in the workforce. Um, and, and so it really just does become, is this what your passion is? Do you like problem solving? Do you like, um, you know, analyzing things? Do you, do you like figuring things out <laughs> intellectually? But when it comes to representation of women in data science and data analytics and pretty much everything uh, technical, um, I think things have gotten better uh, through my lifetime. So. I, you know, I was a child in the 70s and 80s. I went to college in the early 90s. I graduated with my PhD in 2003, um, and I spent almost 20 years in academics. And um, I've seen a lot of change. Um, there were, you know, there, I, maybe one or two majors in mathematics that were female when I was coming through. Maybe there was one other graduate student that was female when I was starting. Um, but now I see so many math majors that are women and data anal analysts that are women. I think what we're seeing is the fruits of the labors of a lot of people and organizations to try and get women into maths and sciences and computing and uh, data science. And now the, the talent pool um, is, you know, it has a larger proportion of women in it. And I think that um, businesses are seeing that talent and they're hiring it. 
So I realized that I was interested in problem solving and logic and science and math at a very young age. I was just good with logic puzzles. I was good, you know, with algebra. Um, I really loved NASA and the space program. I, my first college major was astrophysics, um, but I, was, I gravitated towards mathematics, um, uh, you know, more and more over the years just because it became more and more interesting to me. Um, so uh, it, was a, it was one of those things that it was inevitable I was going to land somewhere. <laughs> and, you know, and, and my, in, throughout that schooling I did a lot of, of computation, a lot of uh, computer science, a lot of applications of mathematical ideas in coding and that kind of stuff. So it just, uh, it, it naturally evolved, but from uh, interests that I had in puzzles and, you know, logic games and, and math. The coolest thing about my job here is that I get to deal with some of the most challenging and interesting puzzles every day of my job. If you're in academics and you're in modeling or you're even in data science, you don't necessarily get to build models all the time. You don't necessarily get to handle real data all the time and, and glean insights from that. There is something really powerful about looking at real data that you can action on. You can develop strategies um, and approaches for helping the business in, in real time, not like in three years, but tomorrow, today. The biggest inspiration in my life is definitely my, my, my mother, and she continues to be, even though she passed away in 2016. She was larger than life, even though she was five foot tall and a little Puerto Rican woman. She was uh, successful beyond measure. Um, she went from poverty, basically, in Puerto Rico um, with parents who, you know, her mother had a sixth grade education, her father didn't have much more than that, um, but left high school to join the American Navy. Um, but they both worked really hard to be able to put her and her brother through uh, college and um, so that she could pursue her passion, which was writing. She lived in Patterson, New Jersey as a, as a child, but then when she got to be in high school, her father retired and they moved to Georgia. And so she's in Georgia in the 1960s. Um, you know, a Puerto Rican woman and she, um, you know, she studies and she becomes, after many years and after marrying my father and after having me finishing her novel, her first novel after I think it took 13 years um, to finally complete that because she was working. She had me, right? Um, she had to make money because, you know, it was, uh, you know, she had to help contribute to the household and raise me. And, and uh, she, but she finished that book and um, she moved up in academics. She finally became um, a, uh, she had, she held two chairs of creative, of English and creative writing at the University of Georgia, including an endowed professorship and a regent's professorship of English at the University of Georgia. Well, hello, Judith. Hi, Hugh. I wanted to ask you about your daily routine as a writer. When I first started writing, I I was at uh, a really busy time of my life as a young mother and uh, um, an instructor of English. Um, and um, I decided at that time that the only time that I could work was at five o'clock in the morning. I started getting up before everyone else did and writing for two hours. That was all the time I had before my daughter woke up and, and the day began. And one of the great struggles of my life as my life has changed, uh, Tanya has grown up now and she's teaching herself and she's a young mother and she understands, but that is that one thing takes the place of another. So now she didn't learn English until she was 13 and yet she mastered this language um, and she put together just the most beautiful uh, stories. For a little Puerto Rican woman who was born in, you know, Hormigueros, Puerto Rico, <laughs> to a mother with a sixth grade education, um, that's like, that's astonishing. She left a mark in this world. She still lives in this world as far as I'm concerned because her words live, um, her art lives. Because of who my mother was and the choices that she made, 
I am the person that I am and, the, and I made the choices that I made. Even the, the, the two lives look very different, right? I'm not an artist, but I, I, I work like she did. And, um, and I will always be grateful to her. Work-life balance is a challenge, especially for, for women still. I, I mean, I, I don't know, everybody's different, but I still feel the need to be everything to everybody all the time. Um, I didn't want to give up on the dream of having a child, even though I was a professional woman. Um, and it was hard, I won't, I won't lie, right? Um, you know, it was really hard to do what I do and the, the things that I did before. My son was born when I was a, a, a faculty member. Um, and uh, you know, it was really hard to balance that. I think the one thing that I've learned over the years is not to let perfection be the enemy of the good. Um, that you can't be the perfect housewife and the perfect mother and the perfect um, you know, employee. I, I mean, and, and the thing is that we often demand more of ourselves than is, is absolutely necessary. I mean, when you raise a child, the most important thing is love and food and shelter and healthcare and that kind of stuff but but love is is you know is most important and i i know that my son would say he knows that he is loved by his mother um, i may not make it to all of his sports games or track meets um, but i make it to some and um, and those i make the most of right um, and I talk to him and he has the best homework help in mathematics of any kid in his class so um, <laughs> and, and he's proud of me and he gets to see um, he has to have he gets to have that mother who does these things and I talk to him about it and I encourage him when he's discouraged in his academics um, and he's not sure what he wants to do so there are many ways to be a good mother and to be uh, to, to keep a good house. So I think you have to be easy on yourself. The other thing is creative outlets. Like my mother taught me to love art. I draw, I paint, I take photos. Um, and that is an important part of my life. And I think it's a complementary part. Um, so it's not just tech, it's not just math. Um, it is art and um, life and love.